Welcome to English Reading by Hidemi Woods. I'll read episodes from my books and talk about them. I hope you enjoy the show with me. Hi, this is your host, Hidemi Woods. I'm reading an episode from my book, An Old Tree in Kyoto. Today's episode is titled, Old Woman. This is about my mother and about what kind of person she is. Old woman. I received an unusually nice postcard from my mother, which said she was worried about me because aftershocks of the Japan's earthquake had still continued to come almost every day in this area. She had also called me right after the earthquake, and when the phone service was restored, she asked me if I was all right. Both gestures of hers were unlike her usual attitude toward me. When she called, she asked me what my apartment was like and where it was located to. I have lived here for nine years and have told her about my apartment many times over the years. I don't know if she's not listening to what I'm saying, or she simply doesn't care about me, but either way, she doesn't remember things around me at all. Considering that many people in Japan have felt helpless and faint-hearted since the earthquake, her true concern might be just for her future as an old woman, not for me. I found a wrap with a markdown of 75% that had left unsold for winter and bought it as a Mother's Day gift to send to my mother. When it arrives, I'm sure she will glance at it, tuck it away in her drawers, and forget about it quickly. I know this much because a few years before, She has told me not to come home again, and yet she had acted as if nothing had happened between us. That was the today's episode. The earthquake referred in this episode is the Eastern Japan earthquake, that huge one. I wrote this episode right after that earthquake. And my mother, she Her calls for me after the earthquake were so unusual because she usually didn't care about me at all. So when I received those phone calls from her, I felt puzzled. I thought, what was happening to her? What's wrong with her calling me like that, worrying about me like that? It was so unlike her. She's not a 
kind person in nature at all. She, she is a person like a scorpion. Do you know the story parable about a frog and a scorpion? <coughs> a scorpion wants to cross the river, but it couldn't, it can't swim. So, asks a frog to help it to cross the river. And uh, a f uh, the frog helps it and carry it on its back and in the middle of the river the scorpion stung it although if it uh, if it does so it drowns with the frog But it stings a frog, and uh, both of both the frog and the scorpion drown. My mother acts exactly like the scorpion in that parable. She just, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, for some reason, she just wants to do evil things to others by nature. Although her action returns to her the would do her any good or although she knows her action would um would do her harm as well as well she just does evil things all the same. To me, it seems her purpose of living is to make others around her unhappy. She tries so hard to make people unhappy all the time. I think she she is unhappy always. So just she just doesn't want to be unhappy alone. She wants to mm, pull others into her pit and to become unhappy together. She just doesn't want to be unhappy alone. When I was in my teens and twenties, I didn't fully understand my mother's nature, so I often so I was often confused why she acted like the way she acted. Why she 
I didn't understand why she tried so hard to make others unhappy. I didn't believe a person like her exists. So I just uh, as a as a <coughs> as a young woman, I just kept trusting her. I didn't realize she was uh, an evil person, so I just trusted her. And because of because of that, so many bad things happened to me. And I learned the lessons hard way. I, one day I realized, um, and stopped trusting her. I finally <coughs> knew her true heart self. Her true self, I saw it, and then I stopped trusting her. When I was, mm, when I was a teenager, I often felt sad. Why she showed me no affection. Because I hadn't noticed her true self, so I just, I was just sad. Her attitude toward me was not affectionate. It was more like rivalry so to speak. She, she didn't show any compassion to me. She, it seems, it seemed she didn't have any interest in me. And uh, so she basically she doesn't remember she didn't remember anything about me. For instance, um, when I was catching up the topic that I had already told her. Uh, a couple of days before and I started um, mom you remember I said that before but uh, that thing was blah 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 and she said wait what thing what what are you talking about and I said I told you blah 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 and she said, oh, yeah, yeah, right. And, and I, did you forget? Did you forget about it? And she always lied. And, no, 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 of course I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it right now. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, sure, I remember. But it, it's apparently a lie. Any foolish person could see that. Her apparent lies. So 
it's funny. She, she never remembered what I was talking to her. And of course, she didn't remember what I gave, gave to her as a gift. And uh, after I left home and um, I paid a visit once or uh, once a year or once in a few years to my parents' house and uh, spent some time with them, with my parents. And I went, and when I was leaving, my mother sometimes uh, said, why don't you take this? I don't uh, I don't use this anymore, and she gave it, gave to me something that had belonged to her, like a scarf or apron or a sweater or a t-shirt, and uh, often those were gifts I had given to her a few years before. So I bought those items for myself as a result. In the end, they came back to me because my mother didn't remember those were from me. She even doesn't remember my childhood so much either. Because she mistook my childhood from others' childhood, I think. Because once we were, chatter we were chattering about cooking and she said to me, um, you are good at cooking, aren't you? Because you are deft and you are good at elaborate things since you are a child. So it's of course you are good at cooking, once she said to me, but I never cooked and I never, I never, I'd never been daft. I've never been good at elaborate things, making things. But she, b it seemed she believed I was some um, um, really, um, I was good at those elaborate things. So she even didn't care about my childhood. And she The thing I really uh, didn't like, don't like, is that she never admits uh, she doesn't care about me. She pretends to care about me, but it's her act, and um, 
she never ever admitted that she forgot about those things around me. And um, she still continues evil things. She doesn't change. Although she's now old, uh, she still makes every effort to lie and <clears throat> make others unhappy every day. And no matter, oh, I can't count how many times I told her to stop doing those evil things, but she never listened, and she still keeps doing that. And an ironic thing is the more <coughs> uh, the more she tries to make others unhappy, she herself becomes unhappier. Her life is getting worse and worse. Uh, it's almost scary to watch it from outside. But I can't help her because she doesn't want to stop. She wants that. So it's an irony, but um, an evil scheme never works after all, I think. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. I'm Hitemi Woods. I hope you join me again. Until next time, take care and be well.
audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total. Thank you.